we're going to be converting all of our code to TypeScript. <gasps> what, what, why have you forsaken us? Now hold on before you grab your pitchforks and raid my house because I'm making you learn a new language. It is nothing like learning a new language. In fact, the differences are so subtle that the conversion to TypeScript is completely optional for the series. Meaning that if you don't want to convert, then you're fine. You can still follow what I'm doing. And you'll see soon as to why I'm doing this by the end of this video. And if you still don't want to have anything to do with TypeScript, you can seamlessly convert everything back to JavaScript. All right, so let's begin. So we're going to install TypeScript globally. And to check if you have it installed correctly, you type in the version. And if you get the version back, it's working fine. So heading back to our project, we're going to type in tsc-init. And whoa, it's going to generate this scary looking config file. But we're not really going to touch this at all. So you can just tuck it away. So here comes the why. In our animation, I'm going to make a lot of typos. So the frame rate's going to default to 24. It's not going to repeat. And it's going to run through the entire sprite sheet frames. Now, instead of crashing or telling us that we made a typo, it's going to run fine. There's nothing in the console log that's helping us. No problems whatsoever. Most of the time, you're only going to catch bugs after runtime, and then you're going to have to go back to your code, modify it, and then go back to the browser, and then back and forth, back and forth, and it's just going to be a pain in the ass. And this puts me on the verge of full mental breakdown. When you spend hours tracking down a bug just to find that it's a typo, That's not the only thing. So it can help you with the, this keyword. It can check for null and undefined and etc. All right, so we're going to convert our menu scene to TypeScript. And all you do is just rename the extension to .ts. And voila, it's so beautiful. <laughs> I'm going to need a moment. And as you can see, it's going to give us these beautiful red squiggly lines. And now we can correct everything. And now to convert the entire project, we can just rename every JS file to .ts. And then in your index.html, we're going to reference main.ts rather than JS. And Parcel should handle the rest. Now onwards to the refactoring. This dot scene dot start takes in a key of a scene and it should be passed an object, but we can pass in a string and it works just fine. So to get TypeScript to shut up, we're going to pass in the correct type, but we're not going to use this at all. And it's an optional parameter. So I'm just going to remove it. And another area where TypeScript shines is the callback function. So we're going to listen to a load event and that fires whenever a file is individually done loading. And it gives us back an object in the file parameter that we can use, except there's no autocomplete and TypeScript is complaining to us, but that doesn't matter because it still runs perfectly fine. Now to get autocomplete working, we have to assert that it's phaser.loader.file. And that is the major difference you're going to see between JavaScript and TypeScript. And that's why I said that you can follow along with JavaScript just fine. All right, I'm just going to make percentage of type number and we're not going to use the menu scene. So that has to go. And in our init function, we're not going to use it. So everything's going to go. All right, I don't know about you guys, but I find it really asinine to remember the keys for the sprite sheets, the audios and the images. And if you don't recall, the keys are the strings that we need to remember to use the asset. So what I've done is I've created an object that groups all the assets in their respective categories. And same with these three new folders. So we're just going to organize everything. And then we can automate importing all of our assets from the constants object by setting the path to the respective asset folder and then looping through the constants object to grab the files. So now the key to the object is the same as the path in the constants. And here is where we're going to run into some annoyances of TypeScript. So we know that this code is not going to break and it's going to be perfectly fine. 
but TypeScript wants us to assert that it's going to be perfectly fine by declaring types. And sometimes that's pretty asinine to do. So don't be afraid to ignore any TypeScript errors. And if it bothers you, just type a tsignore comment and it should go away. But the point is, is that TypeScript caught a potential error. And again, since TypeScript is literally just JavaScript, you don't have to submit to the type system. You can just ignore TypeScript and you're back to your old dynamic JavaScript. The problem for me, of course, is that JavaScript is just too dynamic, and TypeScript restores balance to the world, and saves me a lot of time. And it's just the same code for the audio and the sprites. Except for load sprite, because it takes in a frame configuration object, which if you don't remember, it's the frame height and width. And you can grab the types from the tooltip or the docs, or you can just be lazy and do a TS ignore. And since the type config is an optional parameter, you can just type a question mark, and now it can be of or undefined. Now we can just run the functions and remove all the code that is now automated. And if you get these green triangle square things, that means something went wrong with the creating or the loading. And I forgot to remove the manual loading for the audio, so I'm just going to do that. Now in our menu scene where we use the keys, we can just rely on the autocomplete. And this personally just saves me a lot of time because I'm having another project where I have over 100 sprites and assets. And phaser doesn't help because it doesn't crash and just puts green triangle squares on the screen. And the last topic I want to cover is type inferencing. So add image and add sprite, return the corresponding created object, and TypeScript is smart enough to guess what it is. And this is what prevents us from trailing down to calling methods on where they don't exist. But it's best to get into the habit of asserting as many types as possible. And when we get into containers, you'll see why it's more useful. But for now, I leave the rest of asserting the types on the menu scene to you as an exercise to get used to TypeScript. Now, in the previous video, I gave you a challenge to implement the options button and transfer scenes. And the answer to that is that we're just going to create an options button variable. And then we're going to copy and paste the play button code and then just replace every instance with the options button variable. And then we're going to remove the annoying console.logs. And then for the options button, we're going to launch a scene in parallel. But we haven't created that scene yet, so I'm just going to comment it out. And for the play button, we're going to run scene.start, which will close this scene and then move it to the next scene, which will be our game scene. Still don't want to convert to TypeScript? Well, you can go to the tsconfig. Set the target to 2015, set the module to 2015, and then the alt directory to a js-source folder. And there we go. All the code that I've written is completely converted to JavaScript. You can ignore the errors, by the way. And all you have to do now is to point parcel at the main.js file. Anyways, thanks for watching. I know I haven't taken the best approach to certain things, but we'll correct them along the way.